Welcome to Growing Stronger Every Day, a video series which focuses on building stronger rural communities. In this video series, you'll hear from industry professionals about how getting calf nutrition right can have long-term impacts on the profitability of your herd. Through this series, we will also interview professionals who are passionate about rural and regional health and making a difference in our communities. of Growing Stronger Every Day video series and we're very excited today to be talking to Leanne Karoka who uh, is the Manager of Business and Social Resilience Program with uh, the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries. She's based out of uh, an area just between Dungog and Gloucester in New South Wales with her husband and four boys. She's got some great stories both professionally and personally uh, to talk to us today about. So, Leon, thanks so much for joining us today. And um, we've had a couple of good chats leading up to this and really excited to talk to you more. Um, can you just yeah. give us a bit of a background on, on yourself and, and the work that you do do, please? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks, Tom, and thanks for inviting me along. Really appreciate it. Uh, so, yeah, so I manage the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries Business and Social Resilience Programs. And those programs include the Young Farmer Business Program, the Rural Resilience Program, and the Rural Women's Network. So really great programs that are about building um, connections, building confidence and building skills of our farming and fishing sector. Just, uh, I suppose, you know, through what you are doing, um, I know when we, we talked, you, you talked about um, building long-term resilience with, with what you're yeah. talking about. Can you just elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah, sure. So. Resilience is probably one of the principles behind the work that we do. And, you know, particularly when we're, we're working with farmers and fishers, you know, they're, they're naturally resilient. You know, they're dealing with challenges every day. They're dealing with adversity and risk every day. And particularly over the last three years, you know, we've gone um, from drought and there's still a lot of farmers impacted by drought to bushfires, floods, and now COVID. So, I think for us working in long-term resilience, what we're trying to do is to work with our farming and fishing businesses to think about how they can manage adversity and manage risk as part of the norm. And what does the long-term future actually look like for their business? So it's not just about managing their business for the next 12 months. It's how can they manage their business effectively and manage risk within their business for the next five years, the next ten years. So, so when it, it's really interesting, and, and so when are you when you talk about this with 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 businesses and and with farms and and fisheries, is it, yeah. you know, you talk about the people in in times like the last three years where where actual I suppose for want of a better word crises have happened. Yeah. What, what's the natural tendency to people? I mean, do, do people kind of forget about people and and focus on the business, or do you find it it's the other way around? Oh, look, every business is different. And I think that's the important thing to remember, that every farming business is, is different um, and fishing businesses are different. But I think what we do as farmers, we often forget about ourselves and we, we don't prioritise or invest in looking after ourselves. You know, it's about the business. It's about, you know, the cows and how healthy they're going to be. It's about the dairy. It's about, you know, making sure we've got enough feed you know, and, and silage, whatever it is. But what we find is farmers and fishers often forget about themselves and how important it is to actually look after themselves and look after other people in their business. Yeah. And just just on that, Leon, do you just want to talk, you've got a couple of programs that you run specifically there, I think, for both men and for women. Do you just want to touch on those yeah. and I suppose also maybe elaborate on some of the impacts you've seen those programs have? Yeah, so... So there's a couple of programs that we're, we're running at the moment um, that are fairly new. One of them is our Tough program for blokes. So Tune Up for Fellas. So it's a two day workshop where blokes get together and they basically, it provides a really safe environment for um, blokes to connect, um, to talk about some of the challenges that they're actually having on the farm. Um, they actually hear from somebody who's actually been through a challenging time and what's worked for them. Um, it gives them an opportunity to think about the relationships and how they might manage relationships on, on their farm. 
um, and how they can actually then look after themselves and invest their time in looking after themselves. The other program that we've got, which we're reviewing at the moment, is called Shaping Our Futures Together. And that is a similar program for uh, women in agriculture and very similar. It's about women coming together for a couple of days, taking some time out, you know, sharing stories, connecting, learning some valuable skills in resilience. So, you know, how can I set goals? So how can I set personal goals and business goals? How can I communicate more effectively? How can I network with other women? Um, and how can I improve my confidence so that I've got the ability to then make good decisions? Leanne, just, just on the, the, those programs, you, you, you talked before about setting goals. Like how, yeah. I guess, when, when it is, when we are talking about longer term resilience and, and, and you know, yeah. we, we, as you said before, farming, you know, can be more and more, is getting more and more challenging. Yeah. And it is a long term prospect if, you, if you're going into a farming business or I imagine a fishing yeah. business or whatever. Yeah. How, how important is that goal setting? process so yeah oh, sorry. oh look, absolutely imperative yep. and I think it's also absolutely imperative that you get goal setting right you know goal setting is around being able to actually set your direction so you so you understand where you want to be in the long term um, it's really important that you set those goals with everybody in that family farming business so that everybody's on the same page you know otherwise you've got people in the farming business going in different directions so goal setting is really imperative to actually understanding where you want to be in the future Le leon you, you um you mentioned as well th that we have another a number of people in regional communities who are balancing these commitments with business and, and managing a business and managing the people within a business and also balancing yeah. the commitments with potentially a carer's role yeah um yeah. And, and this is something personally you've, you've got experience with as well can, can you talk yeah. about that a bit Place. Yeah, that's absolutely. So, so I guess for us moving into farming, um, you know, and I don't want this to sound negative, but you know, probably our biggest challenge with managing our farm is that we we have a, a child with a significant disability, so we have a caring role, you know, and you know that's probably our biggest challenge. You know, we we have recognised that droughts and bushfires you know, are an issue for us. But, you know, having that caring role as well as sort of going to work and managing a farm, you know, is is a significant challenge for us. Um, you know, and, and I've, I've looked at some of the stats. So, you know, the Regional Wellbeing Survey that was done in 2016 found that 15% of adults living in regional Australia have a caring responsibility. You know, that's 15%, which is absolutely massive. And they also estimated through ABS uh, figures that their caring hours equates to about $60 billion every year of caring. So it's a massive issue for rural and regional communities. And I know in the work that I do, every time I go out and run a workshop, I always come across somebody that has a caring role. Whether it's caring like us for a child with a disability, caring for parents who are aging, caring for somebody that has a mental health or a physical challenge. So it's it's a big issue in rural and regional communities. And, and, and when you say it's an issue, Leon, as far as for, for personally for people, what, what what are the biggest, I suppose, what are the biggest challenges that they face that they, they may not even realise they're facing because it, it's something that I imagine you just take on because it's, you know, it's family yeah. or it's a friend or whatever. Yeah. I mean, what are the biggest challenges that, that really they're facing? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think one of the things is that a lot of people don't recognise that they are carers. You know, so those stats that I gave you are those people that recognise that they're carers. A lot of people don't because they just see that as what they do. Exactly like you said, you know, you're looking after a family member and of course that's what you would that's what you would do. So with that in mind, Leanne, what what sort of tips have you got for people that are in those roles? Because I mean, like you say, it's isolating, but not just, like in your instance, not just the yeah. fact that you maybe not be able to connect with other yeah. people, but also you're spending a lot of your time focusing on someone else and not on yourself which yeah. might sorry, sound selfish me saying that, but as in not looking after no, I, yourself, maybe? Oh, absolutely, you know, and um, 
for for me personally, you know, the, the first thing I will say is that sometimes I don't cope very well. You know, and um, you know, we, we we have good days and we have bad days. You know, and I've learned to go. You know, that's okay. If I'm having a bad day, that's okay. If I'm having multiple bad days, that's not okay. You know, that's where I really need to reach out to somebody or get some some support or help in. You know, so I think the first thing is saying that it's okay not to have a good day, but recognizing in yourself when that's starting to dominate things and one day is turning into multiple days. That's not that's not healthy. And for for people that don't, I guess have. I guess you've probably got the the um, the benefit of of doing the work you do. You you have got access to a lot of tools and things that I imagine yeah. you've learned from over time to help you. Yeah. What what are some programs? I mean, within what you're doing, that for people to reach out to. I mean, are there specific? You know, if someone's sitting there going, "Wow, this has really, you know, hit a hit a hit a mark with me." Like, who do they yeah. reach out to? Yeah. Look, I think the first thing is to reach out to anybody. You know, if if somebody's thinking something or they're doing it a bit tough, you know, reach out to who you feel most comfortable with. Um, I think that's a really important place to start. Um, from our perspective, we've got a whole heap of information on our website about our resources, our tools. So you can Google, you know, the Young Farmer Business Program, the Rural Women's Network, the Rural Resilience Program. Yeah. Great message, Leanne. I think from I'm, I'm going to give you the last uh, the last word, Leanne. But I was just going to say, I mean, for me, I've just, a couple of things I've really taken out of this is, yeah. you know, the, the importance for just some simple tips. I think is you know around setting goals, um, focusing on what you can control, and you know having a bit of gratitude and, and focusing on the positives, um, yeah. and that and just knowing that there is help out there, and that for those of you, you know, and I know, you know, for anyone that you think is struggling a bit is that, that just those little and simple things can make a really big difference. Um, Absolutely. I guess uh, the other thing is, that I think, you know, like you said, just right at the end there is, you know, if we're so focused on looking out for other people is just making sure that you're not only looking after others, but looking after yourself. But is there, I suppose in, in closing, Leanne, is there any other things, any other key messages you'd like to get across or, or sort of key tips you'd like to give to people? Geez, where do I start? Um, <laughs> it, it's probably that message that I said before about healthy minds contribute to healthy businesses. That's really important. Um, and also that resilience is definitely a process. We all have ups and downs. You know, it's not that we get to a point and we say, I'm resilient now. I don't need. I don't need any more help. That's that's not what it's about. It's about you know understanding that we all have ups and downs, and it's recognizing that in ourselves, and what we can do, what we have control over, in terms of ourselves personally, and in terms of our business, so that we can invest our time on the things that matter. Um, and. Somebody wise said to me um, a while ago, you know, and this is in terms of building stronger primary industry and understanding that we are a community. You know, when we look at agriculture, you know, we're not just a bunch of individuals, we are as an industry as a whole. So if we are looking after ourselves as individuals, it means that we'll be able to look after our agricultural industry and make sure that it's strong and vibrant for the for the future. And we all have a role to play in that, which I think is really important. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. And Leanne, thank you so much for uh, for being part of our, our video series. It's, uh, as I said earlier, it's just, I think we're very fortunate to have people like you who um, who are so committed and passionate about, uh, about this space and, and contributing so much to the regional community. So thank you for that and, and really appreciate you being part of this. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity and um, yeah, it's, it's been great. Thank you very much.